Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry. John Wright. Uh, yeah, can everyone hear me? Yes, OK, cool. Um, yeah, so both of these papers are about quantum tomography. So let me begin by briefly talking about what quantum tomography is. So quantum tomography is a very basic problem in quantum computing. The input um, in quantum tomography is going to be n copies, n identical John, copies. John, your, your mic is not. Oh, it's not? Uh, no, I think the mute's on. Um, maybe it is national. No, oh, yeah, it does. Does that work? Okay. Okay. Um, cool. So, yeah, quantum tomography, it's, like I said, a very basic problem in quantum computing. It's basically the problem of learning an unknown quantum state. So, formally, your input to the problem is going to be n identical copies of a d by d of an unknown d by d mixed state row. Here, d is the dimensionality of your state. And the output is going to be a classical description of a d by d matrix rho tilde. And this rho tilde is supposed to be a good approximation for rho. So it should be epsilon close to rho according to some metric, whatever, whatever metric you care about. And the picture you should have in your mind is the following. Maybe, maybe you have some sort of quantum device. You have black box access to this device. And whenever you activate it, it outputs um, a certain quantum system in a certain quantum state. And every time you, you activate it, it gives you the same identical system. And you'd like to learn what, this, what the state of the system is. Um, so one thing you might do is output a ton of states, perform tons of measurements on all the states, and then uh, uh, gather all of the statistical data that you got and use that to form your guess on rho tilde. Or you might do one giant entangled measurement on all n copies of the states. This is useful all over the place. People do it in, in the real world all the time. For example, if you have an experiment, you might want to know what the um, output of the experiment is. If you have a device, you might want to verify that it outputs the correct quantum state, and so forth. So it's a very basic problem. And there are many different ways of approaching this problem, many different goals that you might have when solving quantum tomography. So let me just tell you about the goals that we had in, in these two papers. So we are imagining the scenario when um, this device is a very expensive operation to run. Um, so every time you produce a copy of the state, it's somewhat of an expensive operation. So when you solve this problem, you want to minimize n, which is the number of copies you use. In particular, you want to minimize n in terms of d, the dimensionality, and epsilon, your error parameter. Now, um, for our setting, I'm going to be extremely nice to the algorithm. I'm going to allow it arbitrary entangled measurements, as complex as it wants them to be. Um, I don't care about the computational complexity at all. Um, it can run for as long as it wants. All I care about is minimizing the number of copies that are used. OK, so for some intuition, this matrix you're trying to estimate, rho, is a d by d matrix. So you're trying to estimate d squared separate parameters. So intuitively, you might expect, maybe, that n should scale something like d squared. It's a very natural scaling for this problem. And somewhat surprisingly, it was not known prior to these two papers whether this was the right scaling or not. Um, in, in other words, it was not known what was the optimal scaling of n in terms of d. So prior to these two papers, the, the previous best work due to uh, KRT, they showed that if you want to get an epsilon accurate estimate in terms of trace distance, then it suffice to use d cubed over epsilon squared copies, so a quadratic bound. So now let me tell you about our results. Um, first, let me tell you about Aha et al., the, the other paper. Um, what their, their main result was that to get an epsilon accurate estimate in terms of fidelity, uh, it suffices to use O tilde d squared over epsilon copies. So here, tilde means that I'm hiding some logarithmic factors in d and epsilon. And this result immediately implies that in terms of trace distance, if you want to get an epsilon accurate estimate in terms of trace distance, 
all you need are O tilde D squared over epsilon squared copies. For um, my paper with Ryan, we got basically a similar result. We showed that to, to um, learn and trace distance, again, you need D squared over epsilon squared copies. Essentially the same result as above, although we save on the log factors. And as you'll see in the, the second half of this talk, all of these new results are basically optimal. These are the right answers for these problems. One special case that we also looked at um, is the case when rows rank R. This is a case that people really like to consider in this literature because it's like a naturally occurring case in the real world. And in this case, all of these bounds can be improved. So the, the previous best bound for this, they replace a D cubed by an R squared D. And then for all the D squared bounds, all the new ones, all the D squareds get replaced by R times D. So when R is very small, when you're dealing with a low rank state, you get a nearly li linear copy complexity. And what's even better, in my paper with Ryan, we got the same bound, even if rho is only approximately rank R. So, so kind of like a PCA result, if it's close to a rank R state, we can also learn it with a much, we can save on the number of copies that we use. Another problem that um, Ryan and I considered was the problem of spectrum estimation. So we have a D by D mixed state, rho. So it has D eigenvalues. And I'm going to call these alpha 1 through alpha D. And of course, these, these alphas, they 